On April 14, 1977, Kasumi Watanabe was granted a patent on his invention of the vibrating transmitter mechanism for a phonograph. Sounds fancy, but in short, it was a plastic shield with a small plastic photographic record inside. When powered on, the small plastic record would spin around. By pressing one of the buttons, a needle would come down, causing the record to play a small, short sound with the help of a small amplifier on the bottom. Although the technology wasn't 100% new, as Mattel used a similar device in their Mattel O-Phone in the late 60s. However, this device was more durable and smaller, making it better to fit inside toys. Kenner was impressed with this device and knew it would be perfect for the Star Wars line. After getting the rights to use the patent, there was one issue. What ship could they use it for? The TIE Fighter, the Land Speeder, the X-Wing were all too small to house the device and its working parts. The only big ship at the time was the Falcon. It could house the device easily, but it was already a massive toy with a high retail cost. Adding it to the ship would just jack up the price. The other problem, those ships were already being mass produced and close to hitting the market. Any device added would have to be an updated version. No kid parents was gonna buy the Millennium Falcon twice just to hear it talk. So the Kenner designers knew they had to come up with something that looked like Star Wars that could house the device. And not only did it have to house the device, it would also need to have a place for the battery and still have play features for the kids to want it. After brainstorming, Kenner's design department came up with a plan. Using parts around Kenner, such as one of the jets from the X-Wing, they invented from scratch a Star Wars toy that was not seen in the film. Something they knew that would go against the rules laid out by Lucasfilm, thanks to George Lucas, who wanted to make sure merchandise didn't get carried away like it had with Star Trek. He wanted everything to stay within the film. But the Kenner designers knew they had a hit on their hands and decided to go forward and design the Imperial Troop Transporter, a vehicle that looked like it was just out of frame in Star Wars. To help sell the plan to Lucasfilm, Kenner came up with a small black and white comic book that would come inside the box with the ship that would explain to the kids what the vehicle was. According to that comic book, it was a vehicle used by the Empire to transport the troopers as they searched for the missing droids. They would also be able to transport prisoners they picked up on the way. But that wasn't all. If a talking Star Wars toy and a small black and white comic book wasn't enough to sell Lucasfilm on the toy, the designers came up with a free droid action figure to go along with it. A black Imperial R2 unit. The designers quickly painted an R2-D2 black, cut his feet down so he would fit into the front hatch, and there it was. An Imperial R2 unit. The talking vehicle would play six sounds, including dialogue from the movie, Plus, it would hold eight figures, nine counting the new R2 unit. It would also come with a free comic book and plastic headpieces called Prisoner's Immobilization Hoods that would be placed over the head of his prisoners. The front of the ship had a hatch that would open up to place the R2 unit inside and the troopers to drive the vehicle. After seeing the prototype, Lucasfilm loses its rule on toys not seen in the film. But sadly, this is where a lot of the story gets lost in time. What made Lucasfilm change their mind? It's really unknown, but it was probably the inside tech, hearing the sounds from the film, as it made it stand out from any other toy on the market at the time. As Kenner started to look into production of the Imperial Troop Transporter, calls was getting out of hand. This wasn't the iconic Millennium Falcon, or a small toy like the Land Speeder. Kenner knew it would have to keep retail low, as kids would pick something they have seen in the film over this toy in a second. So the first thing to go was the exclusive figure. It wasn't needed. Next, Kenner redesigned the whole ship to get production costs down. The trooper holding area on the side of the vehicle would stay. The prisoner's headpiece would stay. The front of the ship would be totally redone, now with an opening door rather than a hatch. The spring action hover wheels, much like the land speeder, was redesigned to be just basic wheels. The electronics for the talking device was redesigned, where before there would only be one button, now six buttons would be placed on top of the vehicle so kids could pick the needed sound for their play. But don't worry, that small black and white comic book to explain what this vehicle was, it still was included with the vehicle. The Imperial Troop Transporter was now redone and ready for mass production with a suggested retail price of $5.49. This would put it well under the retail price of the ships that were just a little under $10 but just a little over the price of a land speeder that had a retail cost of just a little under $5. The Imperial Troop Transporter was born, and along with it would come a lot of headaches for Kenner. 
as the talking device inside was notorious for breaking very easy. They would be flooded with calls how to fix it. By the time the release of Empire Strikes Back the following year, Kenner scrapped the whole transporter. A few of what was left in stock did make it to the Empire Strikes Back logo box, and what else was left over got gutted out and released as the Imperial Cruiser, but now with no talking feature. I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up so know you like my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. Oh, Dad. Star Wars Imperial Troop Transporter. Stormtrooper sold separately. New from Kenner. Hey, jump man <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>